Day 7, multiplying and dividing fractions. We're going to start by multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. When you're working with mixed numbers, you can turn those mixed numbers into improper fractions, so that way you can multiply the two fractions. When you do so, if you can cross simplify, I would do that first, so that way you do not have to worry about simplifying after you multiply. When you multiply fractions, you multiply the numbers straight across. So your numerators times your numerators, your denominators times your denominators, and keep it in standard or sorry in simplest form so if we look at some examples that are not done for us for 11 we are multiplying and writing each product in lowest terms so with a we have two thirds times five six i'm going to see if i can cross simplify first i see that both of my fractions are not mixed numbers so see if i can multi or if, sorry cross simplify i can the two and the six share a common factor of two so i'm going to divide both of those by two so the two would become a one and the six would become a three the three and five do not share a common factor other than one so i'm just going to multiply straight across here so one times five is five and three times three is nine so five over nine is our simplified fraction there for example, B, we have 7 ninths times 3 tenths. So I'm going to see if I can cross simplify. I see that both of these fractions are not uh, mixed numbers. So again, I'm just going to cross simplify if I can. The 7 and 10 do not share a common factor other than 1. So I move to the 9 and the 3. They share a common factor of 3. So I'm going to divide both of these by 3. The 3 would become a 1. The 9 becomes a 3. So I now have 7 times 1, which is 7, and 3 times 10, which is 30. So you'll see here that if I cross multiply or sorry, cross simplify before I multiply, I don't have to simplify when I'm finished as long as I am cross simplifying as much as I can. For C, we have 5 eighths times 4 fifteenths. I do not have any mixed numbers, so I'm going to cross simplify if I can. The 5 and the 15 share a common factor of 5, so I divide both of them by 5 and the 5 becomes a 1, the 15 becomes 3. 8 and 4 share a common factor of 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I now have 1 half times 1 third, so I multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 3 is 6, so 1 sixth. For D, we have 3 fourths times 7 twelfths. Again, no mixed numbers, so I'm going to cross simplify if I can. 3 and 12 are both divisible by 3, so the 3 becomes a 1, the 12 becomes 4. 4 and 7 are not divisible by anything other than 1, so we can't simplify those. So I now have 1 fourth times 7 fourths. So 1 times 7 is 7, and 4 times 4 is 16. So that leaves us with 7 over 16 for our answer. For 12, we have a fraction times a whole number. Remember, we take these whole numbers, put them over 1, they are the same exact thing. So for A, we have 2 thirds times 16, which is the same thing as 2 thirds times 16 over 1. So I multiply the 2 and the 16, and I multiply the 3 and the 1, because I can't simplify anything here. So 2 times 16 is 32, and 3 times 1 is 3. From here, the only thing we have to do is simplify this fraction and turn it into a mixed number. So 3 goes into 32 10 times with 2 left over, so it's 10 and 2 thirds. For B, we have 30 times 11 over 12. So the 30 is 30 over 1. The 30 and the 12 were both divisible by 6, so the 12 becomes a 2 and the 30 becomes 5. So we're doing 5 times 11, which is 55, over 1 times 2, which is 2. 2 goes into 55 so many times, so 2 goes into 5 twice with 1 left over. 2 goes into 15 7 times with 1 left over, so that's 27 and 1 half. For C, we have 156 times 3 fourths. The 156 is going to be put over 1. The 4 goes into 156 39 times. So we're doing 39 times 3, which is 117. For D, we have 5 6 times 20, 222. So we put that over 1. The 6 goes into 222 37 times, so the 6 becomes a 1, the 222 becomes 37. So we're just doing 37 times 5, 
which gives us 185. For 13, we are going to be multiplying these fractions by mixed numbers. So for A, I have 2 thirds times 5 and 3 fourths. 13A. I have 2 thirds times 5 and 3 fourths. All right, so I'm going to turn this 5 and 3 fourths into an improper fraction. So I'm going to keep the 2 thirds times 5 times 4 is 20 plus 3 is 23. Keep it over the 4. From here, I can cross simplify the 2 and the 4. The 2 becomes a 1. The 4 becomes a 2. So I'm doing 1 times 23, which is 23, over 3 times 2, which is 6. 6 goes into 23 3 times with 18. So 23 minus 18 gives us 5. Well, that's just left over. We keep that over the 6. So it's 3 and 5 sixths. For 13b, we have 5 eighths times 7 and 3 fifths. 5 eighths times 7 and 3 fifths. Okay, so we're going to turn the 7 and 3 fifths into an improper fraction. 7 times 5 is 35, plus 3 is 38. Keep it over the 5, and then keep the 5 over 8. To cross simplify here, those 5's both become 1's. The 8 and the 38 are both divisible by 2, so the 8 can become a 4. The 38 will become a 16. The 1 left over 8, 9, so sorry. This is 19, not 16. All right, so from here, the 1 times 19 gives us 19, and the 4 times 1 is 4. So then we simplify these, and we are left with 4 and 3 fourths. For 13c, we're given 2 and 2 thirds times 3 eighths. So 2 and 2 thirds times 3 eighths. All right, so the 2 and 2 thirds has to become an improper fraction. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8. Keep it over 3. We're going to multiply that by 3 eighths. You'll realize here the 8's both become 1's, so do the 3's. So it's just 1 times 1 over 1 times 1, which is 1. For 13D, they give us... 2 and 2 sevenths times 4 and 4 tenths. 2 and 2 sevenths times 4 and 4 tenths, right? Yes, or no, sorry, 9 tenths. 9 tenths. Okay. So we're going to turn both of these into improper fractions. For 2 and 2 sevenths, 2 times 7 is 14 plus 2 is 16. Keep it over 7. For the 4 and 9 tenths, 4 times 10 is 40, plus 9 is 49 over 10. The 7 and the 49 can cross simplify. The 7 is going to become a 1. The 49 becomes 7. 16 and 10 can also cross simplify, dividing both of those by 2. So 16 will become 8, and 10 becomes 5. So we have 8 times 7 over 1 times 5. The 8 times 7 is 56. The 1 times 5 is 5. 5 goes into 56 11 times with 55, so we're going to have 1 left over, so it's going to be 11 and 1 fifth. For 14, it tells us to com complete, write less than, greater than, or equal to. So A says the product of a whole number greater than 1 and a proper fraction is always what? the whole number. So the product of a whole number, let's say 3, and a proper fraction, so let's say 1 half, is always what the whole number. So if we multiply these, that's 3 and 1 half, or sorry, 3 over 2, so 3 halves, and that's 1 and 1 half. So that's less than the whole number. For B, it says the product of a whole number greater than 1, so let's use 3, 
and a mixed number, so let's use one and one half, is always what the whole number. So this would be three over one times one times two is two plus one is three over two. So this is nine over two, which is four and one half. So this is always gonna be greater than For C, we have the product of two improper fractions is always what one? So two improper fractions, let's say three over two and five over three. So this is gonna turn into ones, this five over two, so that is two and one half. So that's always greater than one. For 15, it asks us to find each answer. Do all work in parentheses first. So think order of operations with here. So parentheses, exponents, multiplication, then division, then adding and subtracting. So parentheses first. For A, we have 2 times 3 eighths times 2 ninths. So I'm going to put this down here. 15A, 2 times 3 eighths times two ninths. Okay, so two times three eighths is two over one. The two is gonna become a one, the eight becomes a four, so it's just three fourths, oops, times two ninths. So the three becomes a one, the nine becomes a three, the four becomes a two, the two becomes a one. So two times, or sorry, one times one is one, two times three is six, so that's one sixth. For 15b, we have 8 times 1 and 1 fourth minus 3. So 8 times 1 and 1 fourth, that 8 is going to become 8 over 1. The 1 and 1 fourth is 5 over 4. The 8 and the 4 become 2 and 1. So 2 times 5 is 10. Keep it over 1, it's just 10. Minus 3 is going to give us 7. For 15c, we have 4 fifths times 12 and 1 half times 6 and 1 fourth times 2 fifths. Okay. So, for this one, the four-fifths can stay four-fifths. The twelfth and one-half is going to become 25 over 2. The, 60, the six and one-fourth is going to be 25 over 4. And the two-fifths can stay. So, the four is going to become a two, making the two a one. 5 becomes a 1, making the 25 a 5. So that's just 2 times 5, which is 10. For the 25 over 4 times 2 over 5, the 2 becomes a 1, the 4 becomes a 2. The 5 becomes a 1, the 25 becomes 5. So that's 5 over 2. This 10 is the same thing as 10 over 1. So the 10 becomes a 5, the 2 becomes a 1. 5 times 5 is 25. I'm going to actually do 15D, oops, up here. So we have 3 fourths times 2 and 2 fifths minus 5 sixths times 1 and 11 over 25. All right, so the 3 fourths times 2 fifths, the 3 fourths can stay 3 fourths. The 2 and 2 fifths, however, is going to become 2 times 5, which is 10, plus 2 is 12 over 5. For the 5 sixths minus 1 and 11 20 fifths, the 5 sixths will stay. The 1 times 25 is 25, plus 11 is 36 over 25. So we're going to simplify first before we multiply. With the 3 fourths and the 12, fi the 12 fifths, the 4 becomes a 1, the 12 becomes a 3, so that's 9 over 5. 
with the 5, 6 times 36 over 25, the 6 becomes a 1, the 36 becomes 6, the 5 becomes a 1, the 25 becomes 5. So that's 6 over 5. So we now have 9 minus 6 all over 5. So that's 3 over 5. For dividing fractions and mixed numbers, remember your fractions have to be improper fractions. You cannot have mixed numbers when you're dividing fractions either. So turn any mixed number into an improper fraction. Then keep, change, flip, which means keep the first fraction, change the operation to multiplication, flip the second fraction, or take the reciprocal of the second fraction. So... If we work on some examples, for 11, we are to divide and write each answer in lowest terms. So for A, we have 2 ninths divided by 1 third. So we're going to keep, change, flip, since both of these are improper fractions, or since we do not have mixed numbers. So the 2 ninths is going to stay. We're going to change the multiplication. We're going to flip the second fraction. That's going to be 3 over 1. We can simplify the 9 and the 3. The, three, the 9 becomes 3. The 3 becomes 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. And 3 times 1 is 3. So that's 2 thirds. For B, we have 2 fifths divided by 1 sixth. So keep, change, flip, since there's no mixed numbers. So 2 fifths times 6 over 1. With this, we cannot cross simplify. There's no factors between 2 and 1 other than 1 that they share. And there's no factors between 5 and 6 that they share other than 1. So 2 times 6 is 12. 5 times 1 is 5. Simplify this, turn it into a mixed number. 5 goes into 12 twice with 2 left over. So that's 2 and 2 fifths. For 11c, we are given 5 eighths divided by 5 sevenths. So 5 eighths divided by 5 sevenths. Okay. So we're going to keep change flip since there's no mixed numbers. So we're going to have 5 eighths times 7 over 5. Those 5s are going to simplify to become 1s. So we just have 1 times 7, which is 7, and 8 times 1, which is 8. So that's 7 eighths. And for 11D, we have 2 over 7 divided by 5 over 9. So there's no mixed numbers here. We're going to keep change flip. So it's 2 over 7 times 9 over 5. You cannot simplify, so we are going to multiply straight across. 2 times 9 is 18. The 7 times 5 is 35. We cannot simplify that any further, so it's just 18 over 35. For 12, we have, for A, 10 divided by 5 eighths. 10 divided by 5 eighths. So when I turn this 10 into 10 over 1, I'm also going to keep change flip. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 10 over 1 times 8 over 5. We can simplify the 10 and the 5. The 10 becomes a 2. 5 becomes a 1. So it's just 2 times 8, which is 16. For 12b, we have 6 divided by 5 sixths. So that's 6 divided by 5 sixths. So we're going to keep change flip and turn that 6 into 6 over 1 times 6 over 5. We cannot simplify, so this is going to be 35 over 5. Or sorry, 36 over 5. The 5 goes into 36 7 times with 1 left over, so that's 7 and 1 fifth. For 12c, we are given 4 and 4 fifths divided by 9. 
four and four fifths divided by nine. Okay, so we're gonna keep change flip, but we're also gonna turn the four fifths into an improper fraction. Remember that nine is nine over one. So four times five is 20 plus four is 24 over five times, take the reciprocal of the nine over one, that's one over nine. From here, we cannot cross simplify, so we're gonna multiply straight across. The 24 times one is 24, and the five times nine is 45. So 24 over 45. For 12D, we have one and seven eighths divided by four. So again, we're gonna turn the one and seven eighths into an improper fraction. So one times eight is eight. Eight plus seven gives us 15 over eight. We're gonna change the multiplication and we're gonna take the reciprocal of the four over one, which is one fourth. We cannot simplify, so we're gonna multiply straight across. 15 times one is 15. 8 times 4 is 32, so 15 over 32. For 13, for A, we have 6 and 7 eighths divided by 2 and 3 fourths. So 6 and 7 eighths divided by 2 and 3 fourths. So I'm going to start this one by turning these into improper fractions. So this is going to be 6 times 8, which is 48. 48 plus 7 gives us 55 over 8. And then the 2 and 3 fourths, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11 over 4. We're going to keep change flip. So this is going to be 55 over 8 times 4 over 11. The 55 and the 11 will become 5 and 1. The 8 and the 4 become 2 and 1. So this is just 5 over 2, which is 2 and 1 half. For B, we are given 5 and 3 fourths divided by 5 eighths. So turning these into improper fractions, the 5 and 3 fourths, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 is 23 over 4. The 5 over 8, we don't have to change, so we're just going to take the reciprocal of that and multiply these two. So we can simplify the 4 becomes a 1, the 8 becomes a 2, so that's 23 times 2, which is 46, over 1 times 5, which is 5. 46, or sorry, 5 goes into 46 9 times with 1 left over, so that's 9 and 1 fifth. For C, we have 3 and 1 half divided by 4 and 1 fifth. I'm going to write D down as well, just so that way I don't have to rewrite it. Oops. 7 over 10 divided by 4 and 4 fifths. Okay, so for 13C, the 3 and 1 half is going to turn into 3 times 2, which is 6 plus 1, 7 over 2. The 4 and 1 fifth, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21 over 5. Keep, change, flip. So 7 over 2 times 5 over 21. The 7 becomes a 1, the 21 becomes a 3, so 1 times 5 is 5, 2 times 3 is 6, it's just 5 6. For D, they give us 7 and, or sorry, 2 and 7 tenths divided by 4 and 4 fifths. So 2 times 10 is 20, plus 7 is 27 over 10, divided by 4 times 5 is 20, plus 4 is 24 over 5. So keep, change, flip. It's 27 over 10 times 5 over 24. We can simplify with the 10 and the 5. The 5 becomes a 1. The 10 becomes 2. So then we have 27 times 1, which is 27, over 2 times 24, which is 48. You cannot simplify these. Yes, you can. The 27 and the 24 can actually turn into 9 and 8. So this would be, instead of the 27 over 48, we would have 9 
over 16. So again, if you simplify fully before you multiply, you wouldn't have to simplify at the end. All right, so for a review, for number one here, we have the prime factorization of 135 is, well, 135, 5 goes into it evenly. 5 goes into 13 two times with 3 left over, so that's 27. The 27 is 3 and 9. The 9 is 3 and 3. So this would be 3 cubed times 5. For 2, it says which number is not divisible by 6. So for F, we have 558. If we divide that by 6, we get 93. For G, that's 772. If we divide that by 6, we get 128.6 repeating. So G is not divisible by 2. For 3, we're asked to find the greatest common factor of 52, 91, and 4, 143. So factors of these. The 52 is 1 and 52, 2 and 26, 3 does not go into it evenly, 4 goes into it 13 times, 5 no, 6 no, 7 no, 8 no, 9 no, 10 no, 11 no, 12 no, 13 four times. So we're done with that one. For the 91, we have 1 and 91. 2 does not go into it evenly. 3 goes into it, with, sorry, 3 does not go into it evenly. Um, 4 does not go into it evenly. 5 won't, 7 does 13 times. And those would be your only factors. For 143, we have 1 and 143. The 143 is not divisible by 3, which means it's not divisible by 2, not divisible by 3, so it's not divisible by 6. It doesn't end in a 5 or a 0, so 5 is not, it's not divisible by 5. Um, it does not, 7 doesn't go into it evenly. Let's try 13. Yes, 11 times. So our greatest common factor here is 13. For 4, it asks, what is the least common multiple of 4, 12, and 20? Well, 4 is 2 times 2. 12 is 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. 20 is 2 times 2. That's the 4 times 5. So 1, 2, 3, we can have a 2. So these can cross out. We have another set of 2s. So that's another 2. And then we have a 3 and a 5. So this is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12, times 5, which is 60. For 5, it asks, which set of numbers is in order from least to greatest? So we can actually uh, take these fractions and turn them into decimals if you wanted to. If we did that, the 5 and 1 third is 0 0.5 or 5.3 repeating, so that's 0 0.3333333 three, 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 forever. And then we have 5 and 5 twelfths, so if we did that, it would be 4, it would be 5.416 repeating. All right, so to order these from least to greatest, the least of these is the 0 0.3 repeating, so that's 5 and 1 third. Then we would have the 0.3. 357 and then the 5 twelfths and the 0.5. So C would be our answer for that one. For 6, it asks which number is not equivalent to the others. So we have six and 16 over 6, which if we simplify that, turn into a decimal, that's 2.6 repeating. Uh, the rest of them are 2.6 repeating except G. For 7, it says, which sum is the greatest? So for A, we have 5 and 2 thirds plus 3 and 1 half plus 2 and 3 eighths. We could um, do this to where we estimate these. Uh, if we did, we might be able to get our answer. So this one would be somewhere around 12. This would be a 3. This would be... A 9, so that's about 12. The 
4 and 8 elevenths would become 5. The 4 and 5 eighths would become 5. And the 4 and would become 5. So that's 15. So I think C would be our answer there. And then for D, we would have 6 and 6, which is 12. So yes, yeah, C, we can do this by estimating. And C would be our answer. For 8, it asks, when 1 and 4 fifths is added to a number, the sum is 5 and 3 tenths. Find the number. So we're just subtracting these two. So we have 5 and 3 tenths minus 1 and 4 fifths. So in order to subtract these, we have to have um, like denominators. So this is going to become 5 and 3 tenths minus 1 and 8 tenths. You cannot take 8 from 3. So we're going to change this again to become 4 and 13 over 10 minus 1 and 8 tenths. So 13 minus 8 gives us 5 over 10, which is going to be 1 half. And then the 4 minus 1 is 3. So it's 3 and 1 half. So J is your answer for that one. 9 says a hiking trail is 3 and 3 fourths miles long. Amy hiked 2 thirds of the way, then stopped to rest. How much further must she walk to complete the trail? So we have to be very careful with this one. It tells us that she walked two-thirds of the way, not two-thirds of a mile, two-thirds of a way. So we have to take the three and three-fourths and actually multiply it by the two-thirds to start. So we're doing three and three-fourths times two-thirds. Once we do that, then we can take that number and subtract it from the three and three-fourths. So we are going to turn the 3 and 3 fourths into an improper fraction. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15 over 4 times 2 over 3. So the 2 becomes a 1, the 4 becomes a 2, the 15 becomes 5, 3 becomes 1. So that's 5 over 2. We are then going to take that and subtract it from 3 and 3 fourths of a mile. So 3 and 3 fourths is the same thing as an improper fraction of 3 times 4 is 12 plus 3 is 15 over 4 minus 5 over 2. You can't do this because your denominators have to be the same. So it's going to be 15 over 4 minus 10 over 4. So that's 5 over 4 or 1 and 1 fourth. So A. For 10, it says a bottle of perfume containing 10 and a half ounces is used to fill 3 fourths ounce sample bottles. How many sample bottles can be filled? So we are dividing these two. So we're going to do 10 and 1 half divided by 3 fourths. So we're going to do 10 and 1 half, which is going to be 21 over 2 times 4 over 3. The 4 becomes 1, 2, be or sorry, the 4 becomes 2, 2 becomes 1, 3 becomes 1, 27 becomes 7, or sorry, 21 becomes 7. So 7 times 12, oh my gosh, 7 times 2 is 14. So that's H. For 11, it asks us to find the answer in simplest form, so we have to multiply first with these. So we are going to simplify the 2 to become a 1, the 4 becomes a 2. So it's going to be 3 and 3 fifths, which is the same thing as 18 over 5, divided by 3 over 10. We're going to keep change flip, so this is going to be 18 over 5 times 10 over 3. The 3 becomes 1, 18 becomes 6, 5 becomes 1, 10 becomes 2. So that's 6 times 2, which is 12. For 12, it says what number multiplied by 1 fourth is equal to 3 fourths? Write the answer in simplest form. So what number multiplied by 1 and 1 fourth? So something times 1 and 1 fourth is equal to 3 and 1 fourth. So if we were to divide these two numbers, then we could find the answer. So we're going to do 3 and 1 fourth divided by 1 and 1 fourth. So 
turn these into improper fractions and keep change flip. So 3 and 1 fourth is 13 over 4. Divided by 1 and 1 fourth is 5 over 4. Keep change flip. So 13 over 4 times 4 over 5. The 4s would simplify to become 1s. And it's just going to be 13 over 5. Which is 1 and 3 or sorry, two and three fifths. Two and three fifths. For 13, we are finding one third divided by one third divided by one third divided by one third divided by one third. So I'm going to do this first. So one third divided by one third is one third times three over one. So that's one divided by one third so I'm going to do this next so 1 times 3 over 1 which is 3 it's going to be 3 or 3 over 1 we then have the divided by 1 third and the divided by 1 third left so now I'm going to do this part so keep change flip, that's going to be 3 over 1 times 3 over 1, which is 9. Then divide that by 1 third. So that's going to be 9 over 1, or 9, times 3, which is 27. For your practice, one asks which section or which situation is shown in the figure. Um, we're not going to do any of these, but you do have one, two, three. So that's three out of how many that are shaded? Nine. So that's one third of the total amount, which is nine out of 12. So one third of three fourths is what we're looking at here. Again, I'm not going to test you on this, so you don't need to worry about that question specifically. For two, we're multiplying five six times three tenths. The five is going to become a one. Ten becomes a two. Six becomes a two. Three becomes a one. So it's one over four. Three says to find the missing number. So with these, they would both become ones, and the seven would have to have another seven in order to become a one. So the missing number is seven. For 14, we're, or sorry, for four, we're multiplying three over eight times 14. That 14 is over one, the eight becomes four, 14 becomes seven, so that's three times seven, which is 21, over four times one, which is four. Four goes into 21 five times with one left over, so it's five and one fourth. For five, we have two thirds times 15 times one fifth. We're doing what's in parentheses first, so we can put the 15 over one, the three would become a one, the 15 becomes a five, so that's just two times five, which is 10, times one fifth, or 10 divided by five, is two. For six, it asks which is not equivalent to three fourths times one eighth. The three fourths times one eighth is the same thing as three times two, which is six. So we would also have the three over two times four, two, four, yes. This works, this works. The 16 over four though, no. 3 over 2 times 4 over 1. It would be 12 over 2, not 16 over 2. So h is not equivalent. The 3 fourths times 8 is the same thing as 3 fourths times itself 8, or plus itself 8 times. So j is obviously equivalent. For 7, it says Alicia bought one and three fourth pound of chicken salad at six dollars and eighty cents per pound. How much did she spend? So we're multiplying these two. The six and eight over ten is what you're working with um, for that. So this is the same thing as six and eight tenths, which is six and four fifths. So 
we're multiplying 1 and 3 fourths times 6 and 4 tenths. So turn them into improper fractions. 1 times 4 plus 3 is 7 over 4. 6 times 4, or sorry, 6 times 10 plus 4 is 64 over 10. So we are going to simplify this. The 4 and the 64 become 1 and 16. So it's going to be 7 times 16 over 10. The 7 times 16 gives us 112 over 10. 10 goes into 112 11 times with 110. So that's 2 with 10 left over. So that's 11.20. So $11.20. For eight, it says a bag of peanuts weighs one and seven eighths pounds. How much do one and third bags of peanuts weigh? So we're multiplying these. So one and seven eighths times one and one third. So we're going to turn them into improper fractions. One times eight plus seven gives us 15 over eight. And one times three plus one is four over three. The 4 becomes 1, 8 becomes 2, 3 becomes 1, 15 becomes 5. So that's 5 over 2, which is 2 and 1 half. For 9, it says which expression can be used to find 2 and 5 sixths of 30. Of means multiplication. So we have 2 times 30 and 5 six times 30 Yes, but we'd have to add them. So 2 times 35, 6 times 30. D would be our answer. Just distributing here. For 10, it says a tailor used 3 and 7 eighth yards of wool that costs $12 a yard. The best estimate for the total cost of the wool is a tailor used 3 and 7 eighths, so that's 4 of the wool that costs 12, so that's 12. 4 times 12, which is 48. This is most likely going to be less than 48 because the 3 and 7 eighths is less than 4, so H is our answer. For our next section of practice, for number 1, it says which expression is equivalent to 3 twelfths divided by 2 fifths? Remember, keep, change, flip. The B 3 twelfths times 2 over 5 is equivalent. For 2, it says which, equ which expression is equivalent to 5 6 times 1 half? Keep, change, flip. So 5 6 times, or sorry, 5 6 divided by 2. Keep, change, flip. Yes, 5 6 divided by 2. For 13, we have 5 over 12 divided by 5 over 6. So that's 5 over 12 times 6 over 5. The 12 becomes 2, 6 becomes 1, the 5s both become 1s, so that's just 1 half. For 4, it says Lana has 12 yards of fabric for pillows. Each pillow takes 2 thirds of a yard. How many pillows can she make? So we're just doing 12 divided by 2 thirds. So that's 12 over 1 times 3 over 2. The 2 becomes 1, 12 becomes 6, 6 times 3 is 18. 5 says Mr. Nolan is making 6 sandwiches from 3 fourth pounds of turkey. How much or how much turkey is on each sandwich? So 6 and 3 fourths. So 6 sandwiches from 3 fourths. So we're going to do 3 fourths divided by 6. So 6 is 6 over 1. If we keep change flip, that's 3 over 4 times 1 over 6. We're going to simplify the 3 become 1, 6 becomes 2, that's 1 over 8 pounds. Six says divide eight and two fifths divided by one and one half. So we're going to turn these into improper fractions first. So we're going to have eight times five is 40 plus two is 42 over five. Divided by one times two is two plus one is three over two. So keep change flip, that's 42 over five times two over three. 
3 becomes 1, 42 becomes 14. So 14 times 2 is 28 over 5 times 1, which is 5. 5 goes into 28 5 times with 3 left over, so that's 5 and 3 fifths. For 7, it says the best estimate of 31 and 3 fourths divided by 4 and 1 seventh is the thir 31 and 3 fourths is saying like 32 divided by 4 and 1 seventh, that's about 4, so that's going to be 8. So C. 8 asks which, e which quotient is about 7. So for F, we would have 24 divided by 4, which is 6, that's not 7. For H, we would have 36 divided by 4, which is about 9, that's not 7. G, we have 48 and 7 eighths, so that's about 49 divided by 7, which is 7. So G would be your answer. For 9, we're dividing 5 over 12 and 5 ninths. So this is going to be 5 over 12 times 9 over 5. The 5s become 1s, the 12 becomes 4, 9 becomes 3, so that's just 3 fourths. And for 10, we have 0 divided by 1 and 7 eighths. 0 divided by anything is 0. You cannot divide something by 0. So 0 divided by anything is 0. If you had something divided by 0, it would be undefined.